Hello and welcome to this lesson of political science for the class 11 conforming to the central board syllabus and I am Somajit Ray and you will study with me the constitution of India. The constitution of India is the very basis of our national existence and our existence as individual citizens of the Republic of India. Another important characteristic of the Indian state, a characteristic as laid down by the constitution and you have heard this term time and again is secularism. What exactly is a secular state? There are certain requirements of a state when it claims itself to be secular. First and foremost, the state shall not have any religion. There are states which has a particular religion, that's the state religion as they say. But in, in India, the state has no religion. That is the first requirement. Second is that the state shall not discriminate between individuals on the basis of religion. In other words, belonging to a particular religion is neither a qualification nor a disqualification for being a citizen of India and for enjoying the rights that go along with being the citizen of India. So the state shall not discriminate and the state for your information does not discriminate. That is why we say the Indian state is a secular state. That is the second requirement. The third requirement is that the state must allow the individuals the freedom to worship or not to worship. In India, the Indian constitution gives what is known as guarantees, not gives, guarantees. Guarantees what? Freedom of conscience. You may believe there is a God, you may not believe there is a God. If you believe there is a God, there are people who of course worship because as far as religion is concerned, there is a doctrine, there are rituals. So you are free to follow them, you are free not to follow them. No one is going to pressurize you to follow them or pressurize you not to follow them. So individuals are free. So as far as secularism is concerned, the first two, that the state does not have a religion and second it shall not and does not discriminate between individuals on the basis of religion, these are requirements made on the state. Third is a freedom given, given to individuals, that individuals have the right to worship or if he or she feels like, may not worship. So that is the hallmark of a secular state and we have no doubt that the Indian state is a secular state and comes out with flying colors as far as the test of secularism is concerned. And you have heard this earlier also, that the Indian state is a multicultural state. Now here we must make the difference between a culturally plural state and a multicultural state. I think you have heard both the terms culturally plural and multicultural. What is culturally plural? We know that India is culturally plural, America is culturally plural. It means that people belonging to various religious, linguistic, racial and cultural groups are present in the country within the state as citizens. The very acceptance of the existence of these various groups, that is known as cultural pluralism. When you accept that various groups are present, simply cultural pluralism means that. If you go beyond that, if the constitution has made provisions to protect the rights of the various groups, 
various religious groups, linguistic groups, racial groups, cultural groups and does not discriminate between them, then we call it multicultural. So, mere acceptance, simple acceptance of plurality does not make a state a multicultural state. You must remember this, mere ac acceptance of plurality is not enough. What should a constitution do to call it multicultural? The constitution must make provisions for everyone, so that no one feels left out in the Indian state, within the Indian state, within the Indian republic. The result of all this is a diversity, a cultural, religious, racial, language or linguistic diversity and the constitution upholds that diversity. The diversity is a consequence of this multiculturalism. So, the Indian constitution has been able to create one Indian nation out of these diverse groups. So, when you say one Indian nation, then how is it multicultural? One means it must be unicultural. One is uni, it is not multi. We call it multicultural nation, but one nation, not because the people are diverse. The people, many people believe that Indians have a common past. Many people repudiate that, that they do not have a common past. There are groups which have a common past. Not all the groups have a common past. All the religious communities do not have a common past. So, what is more important? A common past is necessary, but it is not sufficient to be a nation. What is important is the willingness to have a common future and that makes India a nation. And what is responsible for making India a nation? The constitution of India is responsible for making India a nation. So, as I was talking about that India is a country of diversity and no religious group, linguistic group or cultural group or for that matter racial group can dominate the other groups. There is no monopoly of power, no particular group, no, part, no particular religious group can impose, impose its religion on others or language group in, impose its language on others. Similarly, no branch of government can monopolize power to the detriment of the other branches. What are the branches of government? First and foremost and that branch of government is the most important in a democracy, that is the legislature. The others are the executive, even though we do not have a separation of powers in India unlike in America. And the third is the judiciary. So, no branch of government can monopolize power at the cost of the others, other branches. That is one aspect of monopoly, that there is no monopoly of power in India. And the third is that wealth and privilege, being born in wealth, being born in privilege, birth any kind of birth based privilege that is not an advantage or if someone does not have privilege, some, someone does not have wealth that should not be considered as, should not be construed, understood as a disadvantage. So, we will now look at the principles of the constitution. Now, before we do that, we will look at the objectives of the constitution. The objectives of the constitution are given by an, a short introduction and all of us know and I hope you also know that that part of the constitution is known as a preamble, the preamble to the constitution of India. So, the preamble to the constitution of India, it begins with the words we the people. So, that is very important, we the people of India. The people of India have themselves written this constitution and given to themselves this constitution. 
it has been created by them and it is for them. It has not been imposed upon them. That is the meaning. Now, the people of India have resolved to do what? To be a sovereign, socialist, secular, a democratic republic. A sovereign republic that Indian state is not subject to the authority of other states. Not only that, the Indian state is not subject to the authority of other institutions within the state. Secular, I have already told you. Socialist means there must not be wide gaps of income. If need be, there must be redistribution of income. And India is a democratic republic. The government is a government by consent. Consent of whom? Consent of the governed. And it is a republic. And I told you, to remind you, republic is a state in which the head of state is elected, either directly or indirectly. And the preamble says that the Indian constitution wishes to secure to all its citizens justice, social justice, economic and political. We will go through it in great detail later. Liberty, liberty of thought, of expression, of your beliefs, of your faith and worship. I think I was talking about it now. The other is equality. Equality of what? Equality of status. That no individual must be disadvantaged because of his or her birth. And equality of opportunity. India is a land of opportunity. Generally, and the media is responsible for, to a big extent for that, the Western media. America is called a land of opportunity. India as well is a land of opportunity. So equality of status and equality of opportunity, both are important in this context. And to promote what? Promote fraternity, a feeling of brotherhood, a feeling of universal brotherhood among all Indians. And such fraternity will ensure what? The dignity of the individual. No one should feel that because of birth or because of lack of money, because of lack of education, one is less than others, one is inferior to others. And such fraternity, such brotherhood must ensure the unity and integrity of the nation. So these are the objectives that the Indian constitution intends to fulfill. Next, we must know that how was this constitution made? This constitution was made by a constituent assembly, as we all know. And this constituent assembly was formed as a result of the cabinet mission plan. And this constituent assembly had to be split in the wake of India's partition, the original constituent assembly. And then two separate constituencies were, uh, constituent assemblies were formed, one for India, the other for Pakistan. So the Indian uh, constituent assembly, this was, how was it elected? This was elected by the various provincial legislatures. And how did this, these provincial legislatures come? These provincial legislatures were themselves established as a result of the Government of India Act of 1935. Now, the Constituent Assembly, as you know, this was headed by Babu Dr. Rajinda Prasad, who, when the Constitution was adopted, he became the first President of India. And the Constitution was drafted by Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. He was the chairman of the drafting committee. Now, how did the Constitution, where did it get its inspiration? It got its inspiration from the Objectives Resolution, which precedes our independence. The Objectives Resolution is dated 1946, moved by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. And all the ideals of the freedom movement, the freedom movement was not only meant to free India from British rule. The freedom movement was meant to assure and ensure the dignity of all individuals. So all that was contained in the Objectives Resolution. And the Objectives Resolution was the inspiration, just as the Federalist Papers were the inspiration behind the US Constitution, the American Constitution. The Objectives Resolution was the inspiration behind 
the Indian constitution. So, we will look at when the constitution was adopted. The constitution was adopted on the 26th of January 1950. You know the 26th of January is celebrated in India as Republic Day. Why is it celebrated as Republic Day? Because on that day, India became a republic. It had a president. Between 15th August 1947 and 25th January 1950, India was what is known as a dominion. What is a dominion? A dominion is a country in which the head of state is the British monarch. So, who was the head of state of India between 15th August 1947 and 25th January 1950? It was King Emperor George VI. George VI, King Emperor of India. He was the Emperor of India on the day India became independent. So, he was the head of state. The moment India became a republic of 26 January 1950, Babu Rajinder Prasad became the president of India. We were no more a dominion. That is why we celebrate it as a repub that day as, a, as the Republic Day. Now, the question that comes to mind is, what was the constitution of India? Or what served as the constitution of India when the constitution was actually being written? India was not lawless between 15th August 1947 and this uh, 25th, uh, 26th Jan 1950. There were two acts that served as the constitution of India. One was the Government of India Act of 1935 and the India Independence Act 1947. Do not make a mistake. Most of the students make a mistake by saying Indian Independence Act. It is not Indian Independence Act. It is India Independence Act of 1947. So, that acted as the constitution of India when our constitution was being written. The Government of India Act of 1935 and the Indian Independence Act of 1947. So, before we finish this lecture, this lesson on the Indian constitution, let us look at the principles of the constitution which I have been talking about. The objectives as you know is contained in the preamble of the constitution. The principles you can make out if you study the body of the constitution. The principles, what are the principles? First, representative democracy, parliamentary government, secular state, fundamental rights, federalism, rule of law, independent judiciary, and last but not the least, a welfare state. So, I hope you liked, you enjoyed this lesson on the broad outlines of the Constitution of India. In the next lesson, we will look at the fundamental rights as enshrined in our Constitution. Thank you very much.